Hello YouTube, Wycliffe Barrow here, x Dedicated. Today we're going to have a look at the Honeywell CDU in the SIBO 737 mod. Many people uh, make mistakes about this, I'm going to rectify them. But first, give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and get the bell on and then you'll be notified when videos appear on the channel. As I say, many people call this the FMC and it's not the FMC, it's the CDU. So first of all, let's have a look at what the FMC is. The FMC is three parts of the cockpit. First off, you've got the multifunction control panel, which is at the top, which allows you to make all those different controls. Then you have the central display unit, which is where you input your flight plan and other parameters. And then you have the cockpit glass, where all of that information is displayed to you. So let's have a look at this in some detail. As I say, it is known as the CDU, central display unit. And this is where you input your flight plan. Now, I've watched lots of videos on YouTube and lots of tutorial videos and none of them or should I say a lot of them they have no dialogue they have no uh, people speaking or anything like that so you really don't know what's going on today I'm going to take you through how to use the CDU the central display unit how to input a flight plan and program it so here you see us we're at Bristol Airport in the 737 Zebo mod uh, incredible aircraft that has been uh, created out of uh, X-Plane 11's default 737 but what they've done to this is absolutely stunning okay let's get into the cockpit and here we have uh, the FMC so to speak two parts of the FMC the glass and the uh, multifunction role uh, multifunction control panel up at the top and here we have the CDU. Now the first thing we need to do is get a flight plan. There are lots of flight planning tools available but I tend to use Simbrief uh, most of the time. So here we have Simbrief. I've got a plan and it's going from uh, Cardiff down to Corfu. You can see the plan there uh, and then what I did was I copy and pasted the plan onto a, a sticky note sticky notes are available in windows 10 there you can see one uh, i'll move that onto my second monitor and then i can read it from the second monitor as i input the data into the cdu all right so uh, the first thing we need to do obviously is to initialize the uh, cdu to make sure we're in the right aircraft etc and so you go to the uh, pause in it page which we have done there and just to make sure yes I'm in the right aircraft that uh, the data is right and the <coughs> the uh, FMC data is correct now uh, in real life uh, airline companies they just download what is required for the flight so whereas here in the computer we've got a racks for the whole of the world uh, in an actual aircraft you would probably only have a racks for a few flights that that aircraft does a few cycles and then they download new ones uh, when they're going on a different uh, route so uh, just so we can see what's going on here uh, it's time to start inputting data and the first thing we need to do is put in our uh, departure airport and arrival airport and I've got the arrival over here on on the right hand side up at the top of course uh, what a lot of people forget is uh, when using the CDU that one thing flows after the other and it's really quite straightforward. Once you get the hang of it, it really is quite straightforward. And, <coughs> excuse me, uh, you put you input on both sides of the CDU or if your flight plan consists of airways all you have to do is put the airways in and then all the waypoints between the different airways will be populated throughout let me show you what i mean so uh, i think uh, my first uh, uh, departure point is uh, brecon so so it's bcn and uh, you put it in on the right hand side because that is the first waypoint okay and then I'll go to the airway okay so put just check in there that that's the correct waypoint and the correct airway put the airway in there on the left hand side I'll put the next one in on the left see it and it's populated the waypoints in between now sometimes you'll have to go to direct to okay uh, so far we're just putting in the 
airways, and as I put it, the airway on the left, the waypoints are populated on the right all the way through. And we keep doing this throughout the whole plan. It's not a long plan. Uh, and some people say to me, well, why don't you just copy the plan in from X-Plane's um, repository? You can do that. I like to actually input the flight plan myself and, and, and do it you know, all the way through. Um, it depending on how long the flight plan is, of course. If it's a really long one, then I won't do that. So we're still uh, putting airways in, and it's populating waypoints on the right-hand side. And I think it's at this point that I ended up having to do direct twos. Oh, no, still still another waypoint, uh, another uh, airway there. Uh, and when you do the direct twos, so you'll see them in a flight plan, and it will just be a number of waypoints. It'll actually say the waypoints. So this is a direct two. So you put that on the right hand side and on the left it says direct. And then here we have another one. Yeah. So another waypoint, put it on the right side and it comes direct on the left side. So that means that there's no airway for that. So you go in direct, direct, direct. And of course you'd be doing that at a particular flight level. So you continue through your flight plan and it's when you finish when you've actually finished all of the inputting of the airways and waypoints that then you then put in your departure and arrival you always do your departure and arrival last not first because the reason being in actual fact you shouldn't put your departure in until ATC have actually given it to you if ATC are online if they're not online then of course uh, you you put it in yourself but that's the theory behind it, that in actual fact, you do your whole flight plan and then wait. When you call up for ATC, they would tell you what your departure is, whether it was a Brecon 1 X-ray or a Badin 1 Zulu or whatever. And then you would put that in. Here you see me uh, just choosing uh, my departure out of Bristol. Um, it's a, a Brecon 1 Zulu, I believe. And then going to Corfu. Uh, finding the uh, arrival for Corfu. Now there is no um, uh, there's no ILS at Corfu, it's all RNAV, so you find your approach. I think it was a Pitta 2 Papa uh, arrival and uh, so we put that in and then at this point there are still a few parameters left to put into the uh, CDU, Central Display, Display Unit and I'll show you those in a moment. We'll just check check through the, the flight plan, make sure there's no discontinuities. There isn't. There's no discontinuities there. But you'll also notice that uh, there was no flight levels. But I need some information. I need this data, such as uh, upper wind, runway speed, uh, and outside air temperature at cruise. And you can get all of that information from several different locations. But I use FSGRW, Flight Sim global uh, real weather, FSGRW. Uh, so I, I can put that data in now and uh, s things like uh, cruise wind. So put the cruise wind in uh, on the right hand side. Uh, with the Zebo mod, all you have to do is click on gross weight and I'll put in the gross weight and landing weight for you. But you still have to put in things like uh, flaps and um, your um, cost index as well and then on the right hand side here we'll uh, need that wind once again so I'm just checking what the wind is and direction at my flight level you'll you won't find everything on this for exact flight level so you go to the nearest one I'm flying at 350 and I think the nearest one was something like 34 or something so that that will be sufficient so put the wind speed in and the direction. I just click that in there. And then the next thing is uh, cruise outside temperature, which I do remember was minus 45 or something. And you put that in, and then it also puts in the deviation, ISA deviation for you as well. So all of that data is in. Now we have to go to our N1 limits. We're just checking through here. Okay, so N1 limit, this is you take off. Uh, and you always put 45 degrees in here. 
Now, that fools the engines into thinking that they're running, that the outside temperature is 45 degrees C, and so you get a derated takeoff of around about 91%. Uh, that would be different for different altitudes, etc. If you were flying high at a flyer altitude, flying at a higher altitude, but 45 seems to work uh, in almost all circumstances, okay? And then, of course, you, you check your speeds on the right hand side there. Yeah, and then you put your CG in, and that will give you a trim. Yeah, so you CG there, trim there. So now we need to go down to the throttle quadrant uh, just to make sure that we get our trim set correctly. Uh, and it goes up in increments of one, two, three, five, and, and whatever. So you just have to kind of work it out a little bit uh, what 4.3 is. I think it was 4.3 for me. And that is more or less it uh, in terms of the central display unit. Not an awful lot more to do. In fact, just checking through a few things here, making sure that I've got the uh, runway wind correct. Obviously, for my departure, you need the right to runway wind. So we'll just put that in. Yeah. And uh, I think that is about correct now. So all I would need to do now is on the multifunction control panel at the top would be to put in uh, input to uh, my initial altitude, of course, ATC, if they were online, uh, not forgetting that I fly on VATSIM, they would give me my initial altitude for departure, which is uh, normally around about 6,000 feet. And uh, then I would need to input my takeoff speed. Generally, what I would do is I would always put my takeoff speed at, say, 180 knots, uh, which gives you any kind of leeway. It, takeoff speed on the M on the uh, CDU would be a lot different from that. It would be a lot lower than that, but I always kind of put 180 in there. Then you know you're safe, that you're not, you know, you're not going to crash out in any way, shape, or form. Just going through some final things here making sure everything's correct with the route and uh, yeah i'm happy so now it would be the multifunction control panel just making some adjustments checking the plan seeing uh, the, the the direction of my departure and uh, setting the barrow and uh, obviously uh, q and h would need to be set and uh, we do all that on here now, all of that information that I've had, that I've placed into the CDU will be represented on the primary flight display and the primary navigation display. So, which is the primary flight display is the one on the left, which is split blue and brown, and the ND navigation display is the one is the set the one next to it, which I'm just clicking through there, and that shows you your flight path and your flight plan. And you can also put data on there, so what height, altitude you're supposed to be at specific points. And there you have it. Uh, now, the CDU, as I say, it is very, very easy to use. There are countless videos on YouTube. There are some really good books. I learned using Mike Ray's uh, book, and you can get that from www. UTEM, so that's uniform tango echo mic.com. Uh, have a look, absolutely brilliant. I hope you found the video useful. I know that there are countless videos around tutorial videos and they don't tell you anything. There's no dialogue, there's no narration, and it's just all you can see is a mouse flicking around the screen and more often than not very fast. So I do hope you've enjoyed this video and you found it useful. If you'd like me to do some more tutorial videos, let me know in the comments below and hopefully I'll get round to them. Um, there are so many things that we could discuss and talk about and I could film. Just let me know and I will do that for you. You all take care. Cheerio.